Previously, we have been talking about tree diagram with independent events. Um, during the videos, I did not emphasize the idea of independent events. Now, independent means that what happened in the first stage has no effect in the second stage. In other words, regardless, the first one is red, green, or blue. The second stage is always like this, right? If you look at these three so-called second stages, they are the same. All right, it's always four out of six for the red, two out of six for the blue. It doesn't matter whether the first one is a red one, green one, or the blue one. All right, so this is about independent events. Right, what you pick up in box A has no effect on the probability in box B. It can be seen by you know in the second stage they are always the same. You just duplicate the same thing because what had happened here, red, blue, green, has no effect on the second stage. Now you can look at that another tree diagram, another example. Once again, independent event. Here, the second stage just repeats itself, right? The same. Because the first stage has no effect on the second stage, right? So that's what we call independent events. Here, independent events again, right? These, they are all the same. These two, they are the same. So what happened in the first die has no effect on the second die. And that has no effect on the third die as well independent but now in this video we are talking about we want to start another idea on dependent events dependent events means that what happens in the first stage has an impact in the second stage all right so let's take a look at this example now these two boxes they are just the same as these two boxes all right only that uh, now we have a different game in this game we pick one box by random from a all right and put this into box B. And then we mix them together. All right? And then we pick another one from box B. So the question is, what is the probability of picking a box a red or a blue from box B? All right? So, now in the first stage we have the idea we have the uh, picking from box A. But then depends on the color, all right? If a red goes to box B, all right? Then the, the color, the probability of the three colors, they are no longer the same compared to, say, if you put a blue one into box B. All right. And then finally, of course, if the green one goes to box B, all right, the composition of the colors in box B will be affected. All right. So we can see this is what I call a dependent event. The idea is that I emphasize it here that the um, result of stage one changes the branches, changes the events in stage number two. All right. So let's take a look at this one. Right? So once again, three colors. The ball from box A. All right. There are three possibilities. Either you pick a red, a blue, or a green. All right. Or a green. Now we can assign probability to each branch. Picking a red one is two out of six. Blue, uh, 2 out of 5, I'm sorry, 2 out of 5 for the red, 2 out of 5 for the blue, and then 1 out of 5 for the green, all right? Now, the, the thing comes here, this is a dependent event, all right? So the stages in box B, if you look at the color, they are the same, always red, blue, and green, all right? And then once again, we have red, blue, and green, let's see whether I can copy this one. Right from the second stage and that from the third stage, all right. But um, since they are now dependent events, so if you look carefully, the probabilities in each branch is no longer the same, all right. Say, for example, um, let's take this part, all right, let's look at this part, all right. So, in this part, the red ball came from A to B, all right? So it is something like this. So we have um to pick a red ball again from B, it is two out of six, all right? And it's only one out of six for the blue, and then three out of six for the green, all right? This is what happened if the first one, if the ball going from A to B is red in color, all right? Now, on the other hand, if the one that goes here is the blue one, all right? Suppose we pick the blue one. Alright, so the blue one goes here. Alright, oops. And then we discover that the probability, they are no longer the same. It is not 2 over 6 anymore for the red. It becomes just 1 over 6. 
alright and that is 2 over 6 for the blue and then um, 3 over 6 for the green alright you can check the integrity of the um, tree diagram making sure that the probability of all these branches add up to 1 alright these three numbers they must add up to 1 so are these three numbers alright so are these three numbers they must add up to 1 alright and finally let's put back the blue there alright finally if the green one if the green one goes here alright what will happen now it follows that if the green one goes here it follows that the probability for the red will be 1 over 6 and then for blue is also 1 over 6 for green that would be 4 over 6 alright if the blue if the green one goes from box A to box B now so that's what we call dependency alright you see that they are dependent alright the three stages here they are the, the, the stage 2 here they are no longer the same alright it depends on what had happened previously alright so um, you have to pay particular attention for, for this kind of question what happened in the first stage has a result in the second stage so finally we can look at the event right this is a red ball coming from box B alright and the probability will be um, 2 fifth times 2 out of 6 right and the other probabilities they are like this respectively alright and the green one will be 1 over 5 and that goes to I will keep the same denominator 30 right for easier comparison for the final answer I will change it to the simplest fraction alright so if you add them up together the probability of having a red will therefore be 4 plus 2 plus 1 alright will be 4 plus 2 plus 1 divided by 30 and the answer is 7 out of 30 this is the answer alright there is a 7 out of 30 chance to have a red okay so likewise we then do that for the blue alright so to get the blue one we have this one and this one and also this one to get this we have to pick the red one first and then we pick the blue one all right, and so on. This is the blue, followed by the blue, and there's a green, followed by the blue. All right. So the probabilities they are two over thirty. All right, and four over thirty, and then one over thirty. All right. These are the blue. Let me highlight them with color. These are the red, red and the red. All right, and then we have the blues. This is the blue. The ball from B is blue. All right. So it's um two plus four plus one is the same. All right. As luck would have it. All right. It is the same. Seven out of thirty. All right. Okay. So that's how we do it. Right. We get the tree diagram. But in this stage, they are dependent events. So what happened in the first stage has an effect on the second stage. By similar token, you can also calculate the probability of getting a green. That was seriously speaking. Okay, um, you can get the green by repeating the same thing, or you can use one minus because it is either green, red, or blue. All right, so you can take the probability of green is that one minus red minus blue if it is not red it is not blue then it must be green all right so the probability for getting a green will be 16 over 30 and that i think simplifies to 8 out of 15 all right that is the probability of getting the green or you can follow the um similar procedure for red and blue and calculate all these probabilities to see whether they add up to um 16 over 30 all right so this is one example about dependent events. The difference is that for dependent event, the second stage will not be always the same. Right? It might change depends on what had happened earlier. Right? While previously for independent events, there's no change. Always the same, the same, the same. All right? Okay, so let's take a look at one more example for dependent events. All right? Okay, so it's similar to this one, right? You have the boxes P and Q. We pick one item from P to Q, mix it up and pick another from Q. But now, in addition to color, we have shapes. All right. So we have two red in P. We have two red circles. 
one red triangle, two green triangles, and one blue circle. In Q, we have two green triangles and three blue circles. The question is, if we pick one from P to Q, mix it up, and then pick another from Q, what is the probability it is a triangle? Hmm. What is the probability it is green? All right. So we have color, we have the shape. All right. So we can think about it in terms of the tree diagram. Now it is going to be a large tree diagram. All right. So we have um, you know, the first stage that would be box P. All right. For box P, it can be oops, it can be a red. It can be a red circle. All right. And uh, it can be a red triangle. It can be a green triangle. It can be a blue circle. All right. So these are the possible outcomes from box P. All right. And then now for Q, there used to be only two items. All right. Only uh the blue circle and the green triangle from Q. All right. But then because the red goes in. All right, there's a red ball coming into this. So that is also a probability of having the red ball here. So you have to consider this possibility. All right. Okay, so that is the first stage. All right. Now, similarly, we can do things like that for the triangle here. All right. So in that, we have um, the red triangle, the blue circle, and the green triangle. All right. If the green triangle goes to box uh, Q, then there are only two possibilities. It is the blue one or the green one. All right. And also for the last one, there are only two possibilities again. All right. Okay. So this is it. All right. These are all the possible events. So let's assign the value, assign a number to each branch, all right? This one will be um, 2 out of 6. This one is 1 out of 6, all right? All the time, be mindful that all these probabilities together coming out from the same node, all right, they, has to, they have to add up equals to 1, all right? Okay, so let's take a look at the second stage. The second stage usually is more complicated, right, because it changes based on what happened earlier, right? So... Uh, if a red circle goes to box Q, it is something like this. If a red triangle goes to box Q, it would be something like this. All right. But if a green triangle goes to box Q, that would be 3 out of 6. All right. And that would be 4 out of 6 and 2 out of 6. All right. So these are all the probability for the branches. So let's see what happened at the end. All right. We have a red circle. We have the red triangle, all right? We have the blue circle here, blue circle, blue circle. And then finally, the green triangle. Okay, we can calculate the probability for each event, all right? They are all divided by 36. So we have um, 2, 6, 4, 1, 3, 2, all right? Now, this number comes from the multiplication of the branches, okay? From all the branches leading to that event. So that is another 6, another 6, a 4, and a 2. All right. I have to do this because I want to add up all these numbers to make sure that they add up to 1. All right. Let me see whether they add up to 1. All right. In order to check the integrity of the tree diagram. If they do not add up to 1, then something is amiss in the tree diagram. So you can check whether all these black numbers, they now add up to 1. All right. So finally, it is the cherry picking step. All right. If you want to do part A, all right, part A will be like this. What is the probability of having a triangle? All right. Then you just um, pick up the case that you have a triangle. So this one is a triangle. This one is a triangle. What else? This is, these are all triangles. All right. So the answer to A, the probability, the probability, I think a triangle is um, four plus one plus two plus six plus two. So that is fifteen out of thirty six. Fifteen out of thirty six, and that would simplify into um five out of twelve. All right. So this is the answer to part A. 
And likewise, you can do that for part B as well, right? Once you have the tree diagram, you have the complete situation. All right, so part B, let me put that in purple. If you want to have the probability of having the green, all right, the green item, whatever it is, all right, then you pick up the green. So this is green, this is green, these are green, all right? These are green. So we have 4 plus 2 plus 6 plus 2. So that goes to um, 14 out of 36. All right, we goes to uh, 14 out of 36. And I guess we can divide by 4, and that is uh, 7 out of 18. All right. So these are the answers. These are the answers. Now, there's a shortcut to it. If you, you, you think that um, draw the tree diagram is too time consuming, all right, you can imagine what are the necessary branches. You don't have to list out the complete tree diagram. Think about that. The way to get the green one is that um, the probability of having a green item at the end, right? There is only one triangle at the end, all right? So there are two possibilities. Either you get the green triangle from P to Q, and then you get the green triangle from Q, or the first one is not a green triangle, all right? But yet, you still manage to obtain the green triangle from Q, all right? So there are two possibilities, all right? If you think about the green triangle, okay? That is uh, how we do it without drawing the complete tree diagram. We can once again do the tree diagram without the tree diagram, all right? So probability of having a green is that the first one is a green, the second one is also a green. Or the first one is not a green, yet the second one is a green. All right, we can think about the probability. The first one being a green will be 2 out of 6. All right, that would be this 2. All right, moving to box Q. And then once you have a green one in box Q, the probability of picking the green again will be 3 out of 6. All right. Or, on the other hand, the first one here is not a green, all right? Never mind what, what it is, all right? It is not a green. So the first one is not a green, the probability is 4 out of 6. Never mind, it is blue or red, all right? It's not green, so it's 4 out of 6. But then you still manage to get a green from the box queue, will be 2 out of 6, all right? So that is 2 times 3 is 6, plus 4 times 2 is 8. So that goes to um, 14 out of 36, all right? And finally, it reduced to the same uh, 7 out of 18, all right? So we have the same answer here, just like here. Only that the one on the top corner, the purple answer, is from the tree diagram. The one at the bottom corner, all right, the black one here, is from thinking about what are the necessary branches from the tree diagram, all right? You don't have the tree diagram on paper, but you have the tree diagram in your head, all right? You just consider the necessary branches in the tree diagram. All right, so this is about the tree diagram and how we can do the same question without actually drawing the tree diagram. Next time, we look at some past paper questions. Thank you.